So I hear you asking yourself, how can I go and get a very helpful rating on ePinions? Well, that's a great question, but first things first, stop talking to yourself out loud. You're starting to make everyone wonder. Good. Now that we have that covered, let's talk about ePinions. ePinions is a review site where people can review products, and in turn, those reviews are reviewed. Sort of a meta review, which may cause the collapse of the universe if they allow people to rate and review those reviews, but let's move on. How can I, or you, an average American, no, an average American, yes, that's better, write a very helpful review. Well, there's multiple steps that need to be taken in order to go and get a very helpful. Very helpful, of course, being the best ranking you can have. One of the best things you can do is write a review on something that hasn't had a review before. Why? Well, because if you write a review for something that doesn't have a review for four, then there's nothing else to judge it by, and you can get a very helpful rather easily compared to something that has an insane amount of reviews. For example, this Harry Potter movie. Look how many reviews it is. Did someone go after 300 reviews? You know, there's just not enough to let people know how this movie is. Let me throw mine in, too. Reviews on something like this are as worthless as Zimbabwean dollars. And if you don't know how much a Zimbabwean dollar is worth, let's just say that if you had $100, you'd probably be the equivalent of a billionaire over there. All right, so let's get back to basics, shall we? So you've found something to review. I recommend something simple that can doesn't have a lot of characteristics because, after all, that way you can go and get your review done very fast and still be considered extremely helpful. Look at these shoes, for example. There's hardly any of these that have reviews. I mean, there's a few. The one above these had 21 reviews. Why, I don't know, but I guess it must have been a great shoe to review. All right, so let's look at the review process itself so we know what we're dealing with here. Oh, and one more thing. Before you even start writing your re review, remember, you need to be germane and succinct. What do those words mean? Well, as you can see, germane is quite clear in that it both is pertinent and fitting. And succinct, simply, is characterized by clear, precise expression in few words. Concise and tierce. Oh, and by the way, I hate advertisements. Look at that news trying to pretend it's not an advertisement. Eh, let's move on. All right, so you want something succinct and germane. And what does this mean? It means say everything you need to say in as few words you need as possible and no more. Why? Well, let's take a little look. Here's a review. Okay, so far nothing unusual. And then you keep looking and keep looking and keep looking. Yes, there's more. You must keep looking because this is six pages long or thereabout. Don't make your reviews this long. You don't want them to be short of only like a few words, but come on, people, don't be ridiculous here. If they're too long, no one's going to read them, and you're not going to get any good reviews on them or ratings of your reviews. Let's not get into that again. All right, so there's a couple of parts to the reviews. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, first up, we have the perhaps most important thing, the title. Okay, it's not that important, but you need something catchy if you want people to look at it. Next up, you have the review body. Now, notice it has a 20-word minimum. Well, duh, you need to have the review say something. I recommend that even though it's a 20-word minimum, that you don't try to stick to that, or else people are going to think that you're dumb and have no time to write something proper. So let's try to go and say that your review should be about 200 words, at least if you want to participate in the Opinions Cash program. But we're not going to get into that because we just want to write something helpful. All right, next up, you have your pros and cons. Now remember, when writing these, they're not incredibly important, but you should basically summarize what it is that's good and what is terrible and makes you want to pull out your eyes because they won't stop bleeding. Uh, enough about that movie, let's go on. It's best to continue to step two at this point, in which you have to fill out some things that are required and some things that are optional. Now some of these things will change and some of them are pretty much the same no matter how many times you do a review. It all depends on the type of product, and, well, that's that. So let's move along to step three, where you can preview and then publish your review. And trust me, you want to preview things. On the top, you'll see the title and, of course, what you typed in your review. And underneath, you'll see a bunch of the optional or product-specific things. At the bottom, you'll see the pros, the cons, the overall rating, and whether you'd recommend it to a person. And I always rec uh, recommend that you review what you've wrote before you publish it, or else the world may wonder what in the world you were thinking and give you a terrible rating on your review. So let's go and take a look then at what happens after your review gets published. When it's first, you're going to see people giving it show or don't show ratings. 
and these are whether or not this rating should show up on the main page. After so long though, people are going to actually start rating it on the quality of the content and saying whether it's good or if it's bad or if it's wretched. So, of course, what you want to do is not have things like somewhat helpful and not helpful show up, and the best way to do that is to write an honest, clear review. I think we covered this in germane and succinct, but in case you didn't get it, don't make it long, don't make it short, and just be honest or else people will see through your lies. It's not just English teachers who are enthusiastic for their students' writing that can see through your facades. So, now that you've finally gotten very helpful, keep in mind that the sooner that you write a review about something and the um, moment that you get it on there, it's going to be started to look at. So, the older your review is, the more likely it's going to be rated by people and the more likely it's going to have very helpful, especially if you're not smarmy and you actually give people information they would use, which I suppose is the most important information of all that you need for this. Go and write what people would want to know. If you're writing about shoes, for example, yes, I know it keeps coming back to shoes, but don't worry, it's not a foot fetish. If you write about shoes, you need to let people know of the quality of the material, the soles, if it pinches, if it's not wide enough, if it's not long enough, and all sorts of other things that are pertinent to footwear. If you go and you start talking off about how the color isn't exactly right because it doesn't match your eye shadow, then you're not going to get a very helpful rating at all. So what have we learned from this? We've learned that if you want to have a good review, you need to follow a few simple steps, a few simple guidelines, be honest, write well, review what you've done, and if you found this review helpful, send me money. Lots of it.